like I, I was playing around with this light cap. Grand Thumb had done his like recce rifle video, and he was using the bikini cover. And I was like, "There's got to be a better solution." And, you know, and looking back, people apparently have made light caps for years out of like bottle caps and things like yeah. that. Yeah. But I just said we can make a dedicated thing for that. Like it was really just for, like, for my rifle. I wanted one, and so uh, I started playing with it. But then when we decided to start on the concepts, it was like, "Well, can we make this work? Like, would people buy this?" Um, and it wasn't just that, it was also the sling hooks. I was big into rucking at the time. Um, but also I appreciate this is like super chill. I feel like normally yeah. I feel rushed whenever we're recording, and I think that's going to be beneficial. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, like the whole thing with this is just some dudes sitting in a room talking to each other, and then we happen to be recording yeah. it. I'm also really glad we're able to do it in person. Yeah, yeah, that's the big thing too, because like <clears throat> doing it over a Zoom call or over the you know the video conference, that's a whole lot. Of, it's it, not as personable, I guess. Yeah. So yeah. you you can roll in if you would like to. Do the roll in. You roll it out. Yeah, or you know, or stay it, strapped, get clapped over there. <laughs> <laughs> gang, gang. Ditches <laughs> get stitches, end up in ditches. <laughs> um. Also, but, before we start, before I forget, uh, the range has that firearm that you are looking for. Oh, for real? Yeah. What firearm is it? Uh, uh, the XL Rose. Oh. Oh, sweet. Oh, yeah. I would like get one for my wife. Yeah. We we could make that happen. We could transfer We have the technology. Yeah, we'll, we'll send it over. We'll send it to you in Tennessee. I have a... So we're recording? Yes. Sweet. We are recording. Well, then, I guess, welcome to the Big Text Ordinance Podcast. Thank you all, y'all. You all, y'all. I don't know why I said you all. I've never said that before in my life. Um, thank you all for watching. Um, I'm Ike. We're here with Chris. We have Ian. And we have the guys from 100 Concepts. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about yourselves and what, how did you all get started and what brought you all together and mm -hmm. give us the story. What yeah. brought us together, Garrett? <laughs> 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 Our, my mom is his mom's sister. We're actually cousins. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how. So how did y'all meet? <laughs> <laughs> how long have you known each other? In the hospital, <laughs> Chattanooga, Tennessee. <clears throat> um, we've known each other for 23 years because yeah. that's how old Joan is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I had like kind of a curving history, like work history before uh, 100 Concepts. So I, after high school, I graduated high school and then moved up with my family to Canada. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I lived there for three years i think it was three years maybe four years so you're from chattanooga and then moved to yeah okay. uh dad got a job up there and then even though i was technically an adult uh they had like a work program uh, where i could get a work visa and ah. go up there so i moved up there and i became a pipe welder so i was a pipe welder up there um and then the company that i was working for my work visa was expiring and they asked me to uh, moved down back down to Tennessee for them and started a business. So came back down to Nashville. They picked Nashville, so they bought a shop in Nashville, and I started the welding business. And then I met my wife, and we were uh, talking about getting married, and we were engaged. And then I was just on the road a lot and uh, just needed to be home more. Yeah. And so uh, her, my wife's father, is a CRNA. <clears throat> uh, which is a nurse anesthetist, so he does anesthesia. Um, and they get paid pretty good money and really good money. And so I was talking to him about just my frustrations with work and how I was gone all the time and needed to be home more. And he's like, well, let me give you the nursing spiel. So um, we were coming back from a deer hunting trip. It was like a two-hour drive, and he talked me into nursing in that two hours. And so I ended up applying and got right in, uh, did a nursing degree in two years. I have an RN. Um, then went to work as a ICU and ER nurse. Hmm. Um, and so, yeah, that's pretty big change from yeah, welding. Yeah, that's a, that's a step. Yeah. And so, uh, then at the same time, Jonah was like in school, mm -hmm. in high school and then college. Yeah. When he moved down to, uh, Nashville, so growing up, like I was best friends with his younger brother cause we were like, we were two years apart. And then Garrett's six years older than me. And so he was like the older brother. We didn't like hang out or whatever. But when he came back down to Nashville, we started to spend more time together and actually like, like, oh, we like really like each other. And we, you know, that, that awkward age gap is gone. Yeah. Um, and so 
yeah, we were kind of friends there again. And then by the time he got to nursing, I was in college. And then I think that kind of gets to your part. Yeah. And so uh, somewhat related when I moved down here from when I left to move to Canada, I couldn't really buy guns on my own. I just turned 18. Mm. So when I moved back down here, I kind of went crazy with <laughs> yeah. the black rifle disease. Yeah. <laughs> and so <clears throat> got into guns. And that's why Jonah and I started hanging out more is uh, we were just shooting together and stuff more. And so, anyway, I went to work after I graduated from uh, a community college. I went to work as a ER and ICU nurse and graduated right during 2020, like spring 2020. Oh, wow. I graduated. So Jumping right in there. COVID was <laughs> hitting hard, and um, it, was, it was a good time. I got a lot of experience. And then 2021 in September, um, they announced the – well – in 2021, they came out with the vaccine, the COVID vaccine. And um, I didn't want, like I went back and forth because I was taking care of a lot of sick patients with COVID in the ICU. And it wasn't as clear cut to me as like, you know, it's awful, don't take it. Because I mean, I truly believe that especially for vulnerable populations, it was it was a good thing at the time. And, and still, still do think that it probably prolonged some people's lives who are really unhealthy. I may catch flack for that, but. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but, uh, so I wasn't going to get it. Like I weighed my options and um, like found a, like a risk calculator. Uh, it was like a living li risk calculator where all of the, st all of the like studies on and demographics of who is dying and getting hospitalized from COVID was automatically like updated into this risk calculator. And I had like a 0. 0.0000 something chance of even being hospitalized. And I'm like, well, that makes my decision a yeah. lot easier. So I decided not to get it from then on out. And um, then <clears throat> in September of 21, uh, Biden administration announced their vaccine mandate. And uh, the healthcare organization that I was working for had said that they weren't going to force anybody to get vaccines, even though there are a lot of hospitals that were doing that. And so I really appreciated that. It was HCA. Shout out to HCA. And then the Biden administration came out with their mandate. And um, uh, any they said that any business with 100 employees or more would be required to enforce vaccination or be fined. And that's where the name 100 Concepts came from. Oh, right? nice. They called me and told me I was going to have to get vaccinated or um, get some sort of exemption. And so I called Jonah right away, right after I got that call. And uh, I was like, hey, Jonah, we need to start a business. Yeah. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to work. And so... He's asking me if I was on board, and I was like, heck yeah, let's do let's it. Do it. Yeah. I was shopping in Walmart at the time when I got the call from HCA, and then I called him right away. I yeah. still remember being walking in the, down an aisle in Walmart, and I'm like, I was like pacing. I'm like, we got to start a business. We already <laughs> talked about uh, starting a business at this point for a while. We'd started reading books together uh, because you were kind of already telling, like, you, you didn't really want to do this forever. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so I graduated 21, I guess. Uh, yeah, I think, I think 21. And I went to work for an injection molding plant for like six months. And so I was like working on projects and like listening to like four hour work week and my, my earbuds, yeah. like working on <laughs> end of arm tooling and stuff. Um, and so we'd already talked about when we like played around with the gamut of things like, you know, you know, Amazon, you know, sales and things like that. But we're both gun guys. And I think the, the scratch your own itch. Uh, is always a better business model because you are your target demographic. And, exactly. Um, so I am. So I graduated as an engineer. I have like a, a general engineering degree with a focus in biology and like a music minor because uh, I like a variety of things. <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyway, I I I've always like. I guess been a bit of a tinkerer, and then engineering school just gave me a lot of the tools to do that, and so. <clears throat> We had, were working on, like, I'd, I was playing around with this light cap. Grand Thumb had done his, like, recce rifle video, mm -hmm. and he was using the bikini cover, and I was like, there's got to be a better solution. And, you know, and looking back, people apparently have made light caps for years out of, like, bottle caps and things like yeah. that. But I just said, we can make a dedicated thing for that. Like, I was really just, for, like, for my rifle, I wanted one. And so I uh, started playing with it, but then when we decided to start one of our concepts, it was like well, can we make this work? Like, would people buy this? Um, and it wasn't just that. It was also the sling hooks. I was big into rucking at the time. Um, and 
working with a rifle specifically and you know your load lifters on your pack push the sling into your neck and so the sling hook just like attaches to your pack and on your sh uh, your pack straps and j directs the force down through the straps where it's supposed to be so mm -hmm. it's actually more comfortable and um, I thought that was going to be the thing because that that improved my life a lot you know comfort wise and I thought that was gonna be the thing that took us off and I was like you know light cap's pretty darn cool and then in hindsight it's like I, I didn't see it coming but light cap really took us off you know yeah light cap is still our best selling product <laughs> it's a solid solid seller we've yeah. we've sold i would have to look but I, I would bet that we're close to over a thousand by the time you put all of the the, awesome. the last year's worth of sales that's awesome if you spread that uh, across the four SKUs that we have i would bet we've because i just ordered another hundred that's awesome. like Last week, I think. I love yeah. now go, going to ranges and showing up and seeing like yeah. our light caps and hex caps on guns. It's the coolest thing. It's, it's got to be an amazing feeling. It's yeah. such a surreal feeling. It's like, wow, I have no idea who this person is. And yeah. they're running a light cap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so we reg I registered the business in September 21, like same day or same like week, within like three days of calling him sometime in that, some somewhere in that time. And the... Uh, then we started working on like product development and coming up with product ideas. And uh, so June of last year, 2022, was when we launched our light cap. So we're just over a year old now. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, that's going really well. Yeah, very, yeah. very nice traje yeah, yeah, yeah. trajectory. Yeah. People have been very supportive so far. You hit yeah. a good, and we've talked about it before. I think you hit a good, a good accessory with a good price point mm. yeah. on something that, you know, like for example, handheld lights, right? Except for Ian, <laughs> most people He's have always the exception. a yes. handheld. I have a crippling flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I have for like, since I was probably this big. Love you and that. pocket knives, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and pocket knives and flashlights. Yeah, like, yeah, pocket knives and flashlights. It's, you sent me a picture last night. <laughs> There's seven handhelds. Yeah, in your backyard, and yeah. you're like, I think my neighbors hate me. Oh, I was like, we we got the new Turbo uh, Surefire handhelds in, oh, so I was nice. like, the tree line like 100 <laughs> yards away. I'm like, OKW, dual fuel, <laughs> cloud, and just like my neighbors are probably like, what in the fuck is this guy? It's like an old timey movie theater. Yeah. Thing. yeah. <laughs> so which one? Which one do you like? Do you have a preference? I, I not really like I mean, the the turbo has some serious horsepower behind it. Like mm, the awesome. beam is a lot tighter that compared to like the OKW or like the the cloud super high candela. Yeah. So like yeah, the new one's like a hundred thousand. Yeah. Jeez. yeah. I mean, it, and it's like I mean, I'm telling you, like the the beam is like that. It's, well, that's why it's a hundred thousand yeah, candela. It's super it's, tight. It's like basically it's, a laser at this point. Yeah. It, Almost. It's, it was pretty pretty impressive. That's but awesome. I don't think you could go wrong with like honestly, it's just what company you like. Yeah. yeah. So that's awesome. But. But most people have one mm -hmm. or two. But how many rifle lights do you have? I mean, uh, Mo each most, rifle gets most a light. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, each rifle gets a light. Each handheld gets a light, yeah. or each handgun gets a light. Yeah. I mean, so we sell more weapon mounted oh, lights than we do handhelds. Mm -hmm. yeah. We sell more weapon light accessories than we do handhelds. Yeah. And that's what breaks it down is because. Well, I, I have no use for seven handhelds personally. <laughs> but There's one in each pocket. Right? <laughs> How many pockets do you have? <laughs> Cargo shorts. Fanny <laughs> pack. Yeah. yeah, but you know, there you go. Yeah. Like so, that was, you know, by design. I don't know if y'all y'all meant to do that, but. Yeah. Well, well, we kudos. We didn't like yeah. we had no idea what smart. we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> like, we couldn't have. We had no master plan. Like we just, I, I literally wanted to feed my family if I lost my nursing job. Also, I didn't end up losing my job. I applied for a religious exemption, even though it really bugged me because I don't have any religious qualms with getting vaccinated. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the only way I could feed my family because we obviously didn't launch our first product until June. But that was the that was the. Uh, uh, motivation behind getting it started too. So yeah, we had no master plan behind the light cap. We just saw yeah. it was a problem that needed a solution. And so we made the solution and you guys got a little bit of everything though. I mean, the light caps, the scope caps, the scrim, all the caps, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cap the, everything. the night vision caps. Yeah. So we are the focusing head on head caps. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I had a lot of fun with that. <laughs> Yeah, but that's what we so we focus right now on signature reduction. Like we have a lot of other ideas, but we're trying to like if people 
have shown us they want signature reduction and we want to give them that. So we're really focusing in on that. Um, and uh, so like one of my mentors uh, was in the Army Marksmanship Unit. And uh, so he taught me long range, but then also, you know, I was like, man, your, your rifle looks like really well camouflaged. And he taught us that. And so um, I use his method on all my guns and you know, you get uh, painted, but then you've got your reflective lenses, and so that's where the hex cap and the scoop cap pros come from. And basically, I just want, I don't want anything in my rifle to potentially give me away. And so we're really focusing on that being comprehensive, and then maybe also for your your person, your body, too. So. And, and you get the, you know, the ND pr protection mm -hmm. with the light cap, which is huge. Yeah, we, uh, last night we were out uh, hog hunting and a couple guys were like, didn't have light caps on their gun and like uh, indeed and they're like, ah, oh, jeez, you know. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, I've never indeed before and we go hog hunting and I indeed. Yeah. And You're I like, actually, here is light cap. <laughs> <laughs> <Exactly, right? laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> every, every light deserves a light cap. Yeah. Uh, rifles need safeties and lights need caps. Yeah. So yeah, uh, we're also running on like two hours of sleep because of that hog hunt last night. So. Yeah. Did you um, put anything to, in the dirt, though? Yes. Did you get, yeah. Awesome. Uh, he shot one last night. Well, we, we did a helicopter earlier in the day. Oh, wow. So, yeah, like yesterday was all helicopter, and then the evening was like night vision, and then we slept for like two hours and then headed straight has, here. Has anyone ever been on a little bird helicopter before? It's the coolest. No. Oh, it was unbelievably yeah. cool. Like, one of the top experiences in my life. Yeah, oh, nice. for sure. Like, like not like sentimental moments like having a child or something but like sorry like, kids sorry like, wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Sarah <laughs> suck it nerd <laughs> but uh yeah like experience wise it was so it was so awesome I've never been in a helicopter also we had like AR-15s there were four of us on this little bird we're flying over like the interstate with AR-15s across our laps and I'm like how is this legal <laughs> welcome to Texas we like took off what, what company was the, the helicopter through that was through Last Shadow they were awesome okay. yeah. yeah they were they, they were, were awesome good to us yeah um, highly recommend but yeah um, you're like this is the most operator thing I've ever done in my yeah, life yeah I'm like we could just like Sicario the shit out, <laughs> out of somebody right now <laughs> Uh, Not yeah. my Christian Minecraft server. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was super cool. That's cool. Super cool. And y'all just launched the Scope Cap Pro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for LPVOs well, on the, on the six, like the two to tens. Drop those on the six, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a little over a week ago now. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited to finally get those out because those have been one of the longer projects we've had. Um, that it, sh it seems really simple, but like getting all the tolerances right to everything fit, and then also. Uh, we we just launched them for LPVOs in the two to ten to start with, but I have like a spreadsheet of like every scope in the industry, um, except there's a couple brands I don't have. But like it's really hard trying to get sizing just right on all of mm -hmm. these, so um, that's taken a long time. And then the hex mesh wanted to make sure that that was perfect because yeah. you don't want that to impair your your visual experience of the scope. Yeah, I was so. pretty happy when I threw it on my one to ten, and that I was like, okay, let's see it one power. Can I see it? Oh, I don't. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah. It depends on the scope, too. It really surprised me. Like, a lot of LPVOs have their, apparently their focal plane is, like, at the end of the optic. <laughs> and that's why, one of the reasons why we recessed the the hex into the lens uh -huh. area so that you, yeah, you could get less of that, like, honeycomb effect. And you'll never see, like, a full honeycomb, but you'll see, like, that kind of weird, yeah. like, it looks like cryptex a little bit, like, when you look into the optic. Um, and it just depends on the optic. Like, the PLXC that I have, you can't see it at all. But then some of them. Others ones you'll you'll kind of notice it a little bit on one X once you hit one point two one point five it goes away so so you, you kind of touched on it uh, but did y'all were you did you grow up around guns did you did you, you said you went a little black rifle crazy once you came back to the states yeah was that something that was always I have always been into guns but I had like a lower action thirty thirty that my dad bought me and it was that kind of stuff yeah and um. Yeah, I think my dad bought an AR-15 at a gun show when I was really young. I was probably eight years old, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. The coolest thing ever. Um, but he didn't shoot it much. It, like, stayed in the stayed in the safe. It's like a Rock River? Yeah, it was a Rock River Arms. Yeah. Uh, it was a solid gun. Um, it's still in the family, actually. But, uh, yeah, so when I moved back here from Canada, I traded him a bolt gun. I think I had a 308 bolt gun that I used for deer hunting and stuff, and so I traded him the bolt gun and I took the AR-15, and that was yeah, that was the end. Game. <laughs> it was it was game over. 
I, yeah, it was awesome. It was an old car 15. Hmm. It's so nice. My like earliest experience with a gun, I remember my dad uh, giving my sister and I like some pump action, like 22 shorts, like octagon yeah. barrels oh, yeah. and like going, sending us out in the woods to go squirrel hunting. And my mom like getting home from the store and being like, you sent them out with guns by themselves. I don't know how old we were, probably like eight years old. Oh yeah. Like yeah. Your dad was also crazy though. <laughs> yeah. Like I was, I was like 10 years old the first time I ever used a chainsaw. And I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I was up in the, okay. I didn't just use a chainsaw at 10 years old. He put me up in a tractor bucket oh, sh- up yeah. in the air to trim trees down the driveway. That's fantastic. At 10 years old. That's oh. fantastic. <laughs> well, both of my biological sisters have, we and, and I have matching chainsaw scars across our left. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying, Matt, Matt, Matt's in amputation. <laughs> <laughs> They're all peg legs. Yeah. yeah. That's oh. phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. And like, in like Tennessee, I don't know if it's the same way everywhere, but like you can drive a tractor on the road from like 10 years old so like one of my earliest driving experiences was uh my dad being like yeah just follow me to this other farm and not teaching me anything about downshifting and so <laughs> yeah, i'm like just... driving this old ford tractor up a hill and like that sounds really bad and this is expensive like wrapped truck behind me i waved him around and then like it just stalled and thankfully i had a rake on the back that stopped it but yeah yeah i started like he, like yeah he had me bailing and stuff from like 10 years old so <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, 11, 12 years old, we were taking, like, the old beater pickup truck and driving all, you know, drive county roads back to the farm. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. I definitely did Like, multiple do that guns. 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nope. I look at my kids, and I'm like, you know, like, my, my fixing to be nine-year-old in January, and I look at her, and I'm like. You would never. I was running around the, the woods by myself <laughs> with a rifle yeah. at that age. You're and like, like, time to get your first car. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's do it. But no, like. Where's the farm truck? Yeah. I think that's one of the, you know, one of the proudest thing, memories I have when I was a kid was the first time dad came home and I'd like killed a deer on my own mm-hmm. and got it back to the house without any that's awesome. help whatsoever. How old were you? I was probably 10 or 11. That's wow. impressive. Yeah. Took yeah. me like three trips packing it back out. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it was not drag it out. It was cut up. Oh, wow. Dang. Oh, dang. Yeah. It was, Tenacious. Was two. We didn't have a four-wheeler. Was, but anyway. Yeah. That's awesome. But yeah, my, also my dad was really big on like like us investing in things and helping us with that. So like I, he went and have these with like a 20-gauge pump with me. That was like That's my cool. first gun. And then for my 13th birthday, he went and have these with me on like a – like a 16 inch AR that I've still, I've painted it, but like I've barely changed it to this day because it's like sentimental to me now, you know? Um, there's like, it was a really nice AR. And then, yeah, it's kind of downhill from there. I started making more money and uh, like, you know, like doing jobs in high school and things like that. And then like spent my stimulus check on a bolt gun and things like that. So <laughs> I still have my Red Rider BB gun I grew up with. Very nice. nice. Yeah, we used to hunt grasshoppers with those. Yeah. I was we saw each other with us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was just home two weeks ago, and it was I I found it, and uh, my mom had a wasp nest in her her shed. Nice. So I like like eh, fill up the BB gun, and I'm like in the backyard <laughs> shooting this wasp nest. You gotta do it quick. <laughs> I was like, all right, okay, time to go. That's yeah, awesome. Thing has a lot of rounds through it. I called you right after that. You were out of breath. Yeah, we were I, running. Yeah, I was like, Chris, uh, I was just shooting a wasp. <laughs> There's just a shoot out here. <laughs> like, don't worry because about I'm it. five. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Ew, that's cool. awesome. Is that the only thing you've hunted? Is wasps? Uh, he, I mean, I've gone hog hunting three times in the state of Texas since I've been here, nice. and I have not shot a thing. Oh, yeah. Oh. So I swear to God, too. Like, that breaks my heart. It's yeah. like stationary. No, no. We like were, I'm like, in, like, a technical, like, <laughs> like, drive, like, literally, like, up. They had, like, seats. At night, didn't see a fucking thing. I was so mad. Yeah. It's it. like, I'm ready. Thermals, nothing. Okay, we when are, when are we going? When yeah, let's going? do it. I don't know. I had a blast. I'm ready to shoot some more. I don't know. It was so never, fun. never... Got anything? We need to. I, so I don't even think Texas has this hog problem because every time I've gone, there, <laughs> clearly it's not a problem. Seen anything? So it's clearly not a problem. I think it's because all the Tennessee boys come down and shoot yeah. them from helicopters. Yeah, so clearly. <laughs> it's messed up. Yeah, we, my we grew uh, like beef on the farm, so I was never actually really much of a hunter. Uh, oh yeah. Except for like coyotes. Um, 
and I was just joking with them last night. I was like, I've killed more coyotes in my underwear than clothed, just because like you hear like <laughs> yeah. spring calves out, you know, out there, and you hear the cows mooing the coyotes, and you just like grab your gun and go, you know. So it gets a little chilly in the fall though. <laughs> <laughs> Mod light just dropped their uh, red light hog yeah. yeah wins the other day. Oh, nice. Uh, they announced that yesterday or something. Yeah, like that for the pr- the predator hunting. So, pr- do you got any questions before anybody got any? Anything Actually, I've got that? I've got one. Go so, for it. 100 Concepts, we know the name. What's with the logo? Is that like a Tennessee mountain, or is there something significant behind we that? We play with a lot of logos. Uh, I, 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 I designed that and just like literally had like a sketchbook and just yeah. like thousands of things. We actually really wanted to do like a like a B for a little bit, uh, talking about like decentralized control, things like that. There was like this big thing to it. And then I just wrote like 100 Concepts, and then I was like, oh, it's like a mountain peak, and I just really liked it. Yeah. Um, and then it's also kind of like our motto, like the, the Trinity, the do good, be dangerous, live free. It's got the three peaks, but it's just cool. Um, and it's catchy, I think, something that's like visually, you know. I like the logo. Kinda, yeah. I like the look of it. I think it's pretty easily recognizable. Yeah. I'm glad we did. Like, I think everyone who starts a small business, like, they focus on the logo, like, way too much. Yeah. Like, they, like, want to put, like, so much meaning into it, and it's always an animal. And like, <laughs> we're running out of animals. Pick your favorite gun industry. Animal. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. We, I mean, like, the logo that's behind you has went through a couple iterations, but it's a challenge. Whenever you start yeah. getting into different things like embroidery, uh-huh. like, oh, well, we can't do it like that. We got to tweak textures. it a little bit, you know, but I was, as you were talking about, I was looking at, I was like, man, that in- injection molds well too. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. The only thing it good. doesn't do is laser cut. That, that was a, that was a big oversight by me. Cause you can't, you gotta like, cause it would have the hollow space in the middle. Oh know? yeah. And then if you leave it totally full, it looks like the Coors Light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, cor- the Coors Light Mountain is actually very similar. It's just flipped or whatever. And I think it has two peaks. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. And it's beer. And it's, it's beer. beer. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't trademark but, ours for a while. We were kind of concerned. We were, we finally did, but we were like, we need to get that done. But going back to Scope Cap Pros real quick, I don't know how we got off on farming tangents, but um, <laughs> yeah, that was a uh, ten-year-old chicken sauce <laughs> But Scope Cap Pros were. That's one of the things that we're trying to work on right now. Like Vortex just sent us a bunch of optics to test fit, like nice. larger objective scope cap pros for. So we'll be working on and ACOGs. Oh, I'm uh, really ACOG. excited about those. Yeah, we're really close on the ACOGs. They're really cool too, and they're going to be super cool. Have yeah. you guys seen those? The, the ACOG scope cap pros on your website. You got pictures, right? Uh, I don't think we have any pictures up on the ACOGs yet, but they're really Maybe cool. We do. I haven't seen them yet. The, the guys did, was it in the was it we in the folder? We teased it on Instagram. We it was it in the folder? Oh, we might have. It some may have on been there. in the media folder. It might be on our website, or it might be on the. <laughs> <laughs> website. It's fine if they are. Yeah. They're super cool. It just We're just fit. really <laughs> close. <laughs> Chris is like gonna go delete, delete, delete. <laughs> <laughs> Don't wait on me. I'm just going to okay. talk, talk about the ACOG. But by the time this is out, they might already be available for purchase. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. How, how close are y'all? Well, the TAO two is really close. But the funny thing about Trigicon is like I appreciate what they do, but also their designs are super hard to reverse engineer, and that's typically how we, we reverse engineer the optic, at least the important parts of it, and then use that as our cut tool primarily, and then we add tolerances and things like that. And theirs is like it's like you can tell it's like a forged, not forged, but like cast part for the body on those. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, those was a was a bear to reverse engineer. So yeah, it's just gonna take a little bit to get all the tolerances right. But the TAO two is really close, which is cool because that's the one I was most excited about. Which is like we have people ask us all the time, like, can you make a scope cap pro for this? And it's like, well, yes, we could, but we'd have to actually have the optic and yeah. it like in the house because we can't like we can go off of measurements that optics companies have on their websites, but they they're rounded. They're, yeah, they're rounded. They're not even anywhere near close enough to make products off of. And some of them are just wrong. I've gotten like measurements from people and I've been like, oh, I have to go update my spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like we have to have the physical product and we don't have enough money to go and buy every scope cap or every scope out there. Yeah, that adds up fast. Yeah, that adds up fast. So, <laughs> so many hollow signs. Thankfully, we've had some really good people in the industry. Like we haven't had like hardly any bad experiences in the industry. I know there's a lot of like drama and stuff that goes on between people, but everyone's been super awesome to us. It's been a really awesome industry to work in. Like you guys have been excellent to us like from the very beginning um but like uh vortex they just sent us a bunch of scopes to build scope cap pros for hell yeah that's um, cool like a bunch like their whole razor line they sent to us and we're like yes <laughs> um and then uh like t-rex arms has lent us eotex at this point trigicon all the acogs are uh, yeah yeah they're really good like, those yeah they're super good about just sending us stuff to borrow and then we model off of it and then you're going to get an nsn for those 
yet. Yet. Well, yeah. Ooh. So we haven't. Oh yeah. So we spun up a new company just well recently, but it's Kratos Design. Group. I saw that logo and it was so badass, but I felt stupid asking what it was. Yeah. I no. was like, it's probably something I should know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's a brand new company, but this is like our creative outlet basically. So like right now we have a gas block out. Nothing special. Just oh yeah, I got the email about that. Okay, yeah, and then um, a a lot cute email. Um, We've got a hand stop (laughs) coming out. We're all it's all basically machine parts. Like we obviously don't have any machine. We're not machining it in house, but we're kind of designing it and then getting it made. But we got a hand stop coming out. Some more sling stuff, like QD stuff, um, attachments and all that, and then um, got some other stuff in the works too. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. This is gonna be like our. We always have these cool ideas, you know, and yeah. This is gonna be a way for like to actually execute all. Bring those. them all, all awesome. online. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, speaking of QDs, we have a thing. Oh. Have you guys seen the thing? This your your the, rifle sling. The thing? sling yeah. QD sling thing, sneaky sling. I don't, yeah. don't I've been calling it sneaky sling, it. but we kind of hate it. Like it works, <laughs> but like. go, okay. So this is one of those products that we've been working on for well over a year now. Yeah, this and was actually since like the light caps was when was I was working like, on this. This was like light cap or pre light cap oh, wow. even maybe. Um, You've seen it though. Yeah, You've it was on it? your rifle, I think, with the little mm-hmm. throw yeah, arm. It's yeah, like yeah, a, yeah, it's like a, it's like a it's carabiner. Like carabiner for your yeah. rifle. It's like an Imlock carabiner oh, wow. for your rifle. So you take a paracord loop. Or pick a tinny. And yeah, so I was tying. Like, I hate QDs, probably because I just bought the Amazon ones because I was too cheap, and they always rust, and then they rattle <laughs> around and stuff too. So the yeah. rattling is what always got me. Um, so uh, you just, I was taking paracord and I was just tying it into the Imlock. The problem with that is when the barrel gets really hot when you're shooting. It makes your paracord crispy and it breaks. Yeah. Um, and then also, if you want to separate your upper and lower, you can't do that. Um, so paracord is just not a good solution. I'm like, I wish I just had a way to like clip this to the rifle. So I'm like, hey Jonah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the uh, first prototypes, I like, I saw like barbed wire in the back of my suburban from like <laughs> doing fencing. So I like grabbed pliers and it's like, like hand bending the with wire pliers. with the pliers, and it worked. I still have it somewhere. It's yeah. Like, so, yeah, he modeled it and 3D printed it. And, <laughs> um, so we've had the design for a while, and we've been running them on our own guns. The problem has been, like, spring manufacturing has been a real pain, and so it's kind of taken a back burner. But we just found a competent uh, spring manufacturer. Yeah, because so, I designed the spring, but it's like there's, like, dark arts to my spring manufacturing. So but like yeah. they had to, like, tweak my design to get it to work. That's cool. Yeah. So that's coming out soon. Very cool. So that's cool. Uh, it's you know it's not going to be for everybody for sure like M lock QD or not just the, like the Magpul QDs are just so convenient mm-hmm. like they're super awesome but uh, there's yeah, a whole be a lot of people that like like the paracord yeah. option for there's people who like running paracord it'll be a great option so I'm excited yeah. for our sling thing that's coming out yeah we got some paracord stuff coming out too basically it's just it's a well, we got a wire one and a paracord one, but it's going to allow you to still be QD, but also have the paracord. <laughs> that's there, so that's super cool. We're almost done with one of them. The other one, we got to find the right, finding the right wire, you know, the right thickness, yeah. the tensile strength, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, trying yeah, to find a good supplier for that. It's fun being able to come up with products. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and still work with dudes yeah. like yourself. Yeah, that that's like uh, my favorite part of OHC is the product dev. Yeah, yeah, it's so exciting to. Like, it's, go from concept to like a physical tangible thing that people put on their guns you know so cool it's so easy to neglect like everything else important in business and yeah. just focus on product development yeah it's, fun. <laughs> it's like ah. <laughs> do we really need to send an email out this week ah. yes <laughs> <laughs> yes you do but we I, could just make n- make new stuff that was one of our our longest conversations i think yeah. the date was we, we we did like a two-hour phone call yeah. on Email marketing 101 with Chris from Big Techs. Yeah, yeah, Chris is my uh, marketing guru for sure. Yeah. I always call Chris for email questions. I'm like, hey, so uh, is our click rate? Is that okay? Does <laughs> that work? And he's like, no, that's trash. <laughs> Step it up. <laughs> okay. I don't think I said it was trash. Wow. I might have said no, it was My trash. words, not yours. Yeah. What a dick. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> that's cool. What, so what's, what's exciting and new that y'all can talk about that's coming from out what are y'all working on right now what's the most exciting product development that you're working on that you can talk about probably the force on force stuff right oh. that's pretty cool i'm actually really excited about this paracord thing the right. sneaky sling yeah, the, yeah. The, the or sneaky sling. sling thing yeah somebody sling baner or something somebody helped us think somebody somebody called that. the name sling baner yeah you shouldn't call it <laughs> <laughs> got it <laughs> but yeah so uh, we're like 
we know the guys that go to Darcy a lot, a lot of guys from Arkansas. Yeah. And um, so I've been sending them stuff for like probably like nine months now to test. They keep breaking it, so we're making it stronger each time. Uh, but basically, uh, for your flashlights, for your LPVOs, and then hopefully also for your red dots, we are, that's going to be a little bit of a like a tricky problem. But um, not sacrificial lenses, but truly protective lenses. Um, we've just like shot them point blank with UTMs and airsoft like over and over and over again. They take as many hits as you throw at them. So, um, but basically that way guys can actually do their training and not worry about if they're going to have to do yeah. a warranty claim. Yeah. So. Oh, also our aperture cap, our night vision cap. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. That's going to be cool. Yeah. That's going to be dropping soon. We're working out some, we had like some tolerance issues with one of the latest batches of inventory we got, but aperture cap. Really cool. We're, we're going to drop a limited. Yeah, I was using it last night. It was especially nice on like the the razors, wherever the, the side by sides, mm. uh, so that you know you're you've got your full light when you're driving blacked out, and then he turns the headlights on. And I just pop the five mil over, and it's like just enough light. Which if you have like auto gain tubes, you probably don't have to worry about it. But it's nice to be able to just like quickly switch yeah. to the lighting. So. Yeah, we're s- I'm super excited about that. Works really well. Yeah, that's gonna be a cool product. So that's probably my favorite is the aperture gap. Yeah. And then the force on force stuff is really cool because it'll be like protective lenses for your, it's basically like a scope cap pro body for your light, except instead of like an ARD, like a hex cap underneath, it'll be like a sacrificial lens. So it protects your light from getting damaged because there are people getting light shot out by UTO. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah Darcy's the place to, f- to test yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Darcy's the place exactly. to break they're, shit. They're hard on stuff. Um, and so also our uh, aperture caps will have a sacrificial lens in them. Protective lens. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It'll but have. and also so with the lenses, uh, we also did some with stuff with red lenses for somebody. We're still kind of working out the details, but kind of like the hog, the the hunting light that or whatever you know that mod light did. Uh, you can actually just pop it over your white light and shift shift it to red. So, but I think that's mostly for handhelds right now. Yeah, so it'll be like like if you're. Should I? I can talk about it. Right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're hunting, it'll be like the same like force on force like light cap pro yep. I'm talking about, but you can interchange that with a red lens. And so if you're hunting, which I guess a lot of states it's illegal to hunt with a weapon light on your rifle, at least in but in this, this one is for a handheld. Uh, so. But we also have one like our light cap pro. You can also you could also just put a red lens. In. Yeah, we'll have red That's lenses cool. for that nice. too. And an IR filter, possibly. Yeah. Uh, well, well, we won't say anything about that. Okay. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> No comment. Yeah. Uh, that, that that was my first. But know. that would be so cool. Yeah, that, that would be so, so cool. cool. Yeah, that that would be amazing. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah, that, Super <laughs> duper. We, we rocked the IR filters on our, what were they, the M300? M3, mm-hmm. 360 yeah. or 340. The, the big boys, right? Yeah, back in the day. You know, back when you were, I still get You guys were still in kindergarten probably back yeah. when I was running around in trash dumps with that on. <laughs> but that was – that was had a musket. We – <laughs> we rocked those more. powder horn. Yeah. yeah, we rocked those more for the fact that it was an ND protector. Yeah. You know, than it was an actual for the light. I still love guys will like ask me like what they need for that and I like look it up and I'm because I, I forget it. The Surfire has so many different designations, but I look it up and I'm like, oh yeah, like this is like twenty years old or whatever. How yeah, it's been around for this is from the late nineteen hundreds. <laughs> no, it's actually a weird side light thing. eBay has like the coolest like holsters that you can't find for weird shit oh. <laughs> and like old surefire lights if you're like i for want real? one of those yeah, yeah like eBay. back in the day like if you wanted a high output light on th- on your your deal you had to go buy a surefire p3x fury which took three cr123s but it was led so then you would get that yeah. you'd have to buy like the magpore the bcm ring mount that'll clep yeah because the, the one inch body yeah, or the VTAC. Yeah. And then you'd have to go buy the old Surefire Millennium series, like that you were talking about. Their DS tail cap, they have a clicky tail cap with that'll accept the Surefire plug. And you'd have to go buy one of those, buy the light, just throw away the light. That way you'd have the tail cap for it. Then you plug that in. <laughs> and then now you've got a high output LED light on your rifle. Yeah. One of the guys that at Shaw Concepts was running those. I had never seen one. I was like, that is the longest light yeah. in the entire world. But that wasn't like that long ago. <laughs> no, that was like maybe seven, eight years ago that, we, yeah. that I was doing that? Like, the light... You learned something high... Yeah, I can tell. The light game has come so far. So far. Because like, cloud and mod light have pushed it so far. It's fixing Elevate. 
a little bit with the we're super excited about the unity gas gap coming yes Dude, with this, the USB C yeah. technology that they can start running i mean you're not <laughs> you're not running current through a 25 plus year old barrel cable connector yeah. Yeah, cable connector. Anymore. Apple just switched it over to USB C. <laughs> so it's so it's, it's something. So we, need to meme that. <laughs> <laughs> we need to meme that. We need to meme that today. Into yes. <laughs> yeah. Run your flashlight off your phone. Yeah. yeah. If, if I, I could just saying... plug my tail cap into my phone and then like No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was Might just like a shot show that would be idea, sweet. which you know, it's they, gotta they, be a thing. They've probably been doing this for years, but I was saying, why are we still using crane plugs on lasers when USB C exists? You know? Yeah. And you could even like worry about the durability. Just make a housing that it like goes into, or what they did with the flat plug. Mm -hmm. You're either ruining somebody's patent that they're working on right now. They've already filed it, or they've already filed it, or there's like five different companies running to patent that right now. Yeah, shit, (laughs) shit, shit, we gotta go. Uh, (laughs) The the guys from Unity are are coming down for a podcast here in a couple weeks. Oh, sweet, that's awesome. Yeah, we're going to talk talk extensively about. Yeah, if you want an old Surefire light, go to eBay. Like, okay. I don't know, I've been messing around with there for, like, Safari line holsters and lights, and I was like, I could spend so much money on random <laughs> shit I don't need. I want to build out, like, a retro, like, the Car 15 thing. I know it's, like... I'll show you something I have in my office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm making this Frankenstein of a... Yes. ...carry handle uh, blaster. Using, yeah. like, old Bushmaster that you bought, or...? Uh, no, 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 that's staying how it is, but I'm doing, like, a modern carry handle build. Yeah. Yes, I yeah. love we've it. Got those, we've burned through some Rock River carry handles lately. With a light cap. I love right? that they... Oh, it will. Oh, yeah, I love, like, will. the Star Wars look with, like, the way they mix, like, the wood stock, like, the new stuff. It looks yeah. like... Mine won't have any wood on it, but okay. it'll be stupid, and I can't wait to show up in class <laughs> and be like, what the fuck are you shooting? Be like, this is my, this is my rifle. Yeah. So you guys sell Rock River Arms carry handles? Mm-hmm. Or the uppers. The upper. Oh, the uppers. Oh, yeah. like the the actual uppers. stripped upper. upper. The yeah. stripped awesome. uppers that we've been burning through. I thought you couldn't find them anywhere anymore. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, they're the A2 style, not the, the not the A1. Okay, gotcha. but the A ones are still hard to get. I think there's only a couple of people doing them. A two still cool. I think that's the only Rock River product we carry. It is. <laughs> it is. It's those, and there's. I ordered forty more of them the other day. Yeah, they're so, solid uppers. Like, and we yeah. got them with the rear sight and we're without too. So I mean, they're solid uppers. You yeah. can't. Then everything else you put into them is what's going to make yeah. you break the rifle. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's a in spec. It's in spec. That's all. Yeah. It's, <laughs> a, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a build, it's like, an A two yeah. upper. Yeah, you can't get. Yeah. I mean, Voltor's not making carry handle. I need to call Crystal. Yeah. <laughs> you need carry handle. <laughs> so, Rock River Arms, like, I always thought it was, like, a really nice rifle. Like, back in the day. Just because my dad always said it was. But I had no, ex- like, that was when I was, like, eight years old and he bought one when they just launched. Like, that was also back right. when there wasn't a whole lot of AR man. There was, like, yeah, there was, like, you had Bushmaster, Bushmaster Rock River, mm-hmm. Colt and Bushmaster. Olympic Arms. Really. Or, you know, Olympic, uh, I think, was one. Yeah, so I always thought it was, like, <sighs> it's a Rock River Arms. But I don't know if that's actually the Back case. in the day? I mean, back in the day, yeah. it was a solid. I mean, it was a better choice than Bushmaster. I think they got, like, a DEA contract or something. And I don't know if yeah. quality suffered. Or they just, I don't know. I like There's a lot of police stuff. departments that are like turning in Rock River. Old Rock Rivers, yeah. Police trade ins. Nice. Yeah. I mean, they they rocked it out yeah. for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm proud of that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we'll laugh more. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there, there weren't a lot of options back then. And even now, there's not a lot of options for a carry handle. Yeah. Who's the, the ones? D. Wilson. D. Wilson's yeah. sourcing them from who? I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll, we'll text them. We got some ones for Brownells for that um, that XM177 build that we did. I think we got those for Brownells. Yeah, but they, I mean, they even had them, they sourced them from the same person. There, there's not a lot of those molds out there mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. There's a Yeah, and there's probably not many people going out and making more molds, you know, like the investment for the forging dies are, are they're not ta- cheap. If we talk about it enough, Mike will do it. Yeah. <laughs> If anyone wants an old Colt, there's an old Colt carry handle across the street. Yeah, I saw yeah, it's that. Pre ban, really sweet. It says sports sporter. It says sporter on the side. Sporter on the side. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I think that's yeah. too nice for me. I like. It's not. The, I mean, it's somebody gave it some love. It's, yeah, it's, it's a shooter. It's, it's been around. Yeah, it's yeah. been reused. It has, it's, yeah, it's, it's not. It's I'd, not a con- I'd rock it. Yeah, it's cool. So what? So one question here. You, you said the guy from AMU got you into the uh, like the. The tactical side of it, or the at least the recce recce side of it. <laughs> How'd y'all get from like casual gun owner 
into like training and this more that side of the house um i'm a big reader and i guess i just started understanding history and kind of the importance of arms like like going from like in the south everyone has a gun right so if going from like fud gun owner like you think guns are cool as a kid and you grow up shooting them and went deer hunting a couple <coughs> times with my dad like going from that like it's it's still a mindset shift to go from that to uh, where we are now and I, a lot of that just came from reading and through reading recognizing that like an unarmed populace is like ripe for victimization it's inevitable by, by tyrants it is inevitable it's an inevitability um i think a lot of people realize that over covid too with, like all the yeah. new gun owners that were like oh shit i probably need a gun yeah. there's riots yeah i need protection on. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very yeah. good way to do I mean, that. look at this stuff went on in New Mexico within the last five days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, with the whole oh, you can't carry a gun in public. There's a big mindset shift, though. To yeah. everybody Dude. being like, "Fuck you!" Yeah, <laughs> everybody, like yeah, everybody. both sides of the aisle, yeah. like people that are normally like screaming for gun control is like, "Yeah, that's a uh, you can't do that. You can't yeah. just like, say that. Like that's y'all don't say that." Now they now they need to just like not to get political here, but they need to remove her from office. They do, yeah. Straight up, yeah. That's like, like within that's, next. that's kind of a big deal. Just like she taking away, her oath. yeah, and taking away constitutional rights. Like, I mean, if little, little, I don't think there's anybody that has publicly came out and supported that mandate. Mm -hmm. You know what? It would only take one person in that state with arrest powers. Granted, Attorney would, General said, straight up said that they're not gonna. Yeah, but they need. Granted, to arrest it would be thrown yeah. out immediately. However. What a statement, right? Yeah. yeah. One person with yeah. the best powers. What the, a the, statement. The sheriff that she told that didn't need a lecturing on constitutional rights. Well, I'm Mr. Sheriff. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I think it's the biggest thing that COVID did too is it taught people just like you have to make a choice. If, you, if you're if you passive, uh, you're just going to get bulldozed over or lumped in with the yep. sheep. And yep. one thing too, like I think the gun ownership is no longer becoming a partisan issue. It shouldn't be a partisan issue. Yeah. Like I don't know how we got into the Republicans like guns and Democrats <laughs> hate them. Like you're seeing a lot of a lot of crossover, you know, starting to come. So I think that's that's cool to see. And I think if we get it away from being like a partisan issue, then it can be like I think it'll be good for the overall community. I it's hard for me to wrap my head around why it is a partisan issue. It, like it doesn't saying, make because, sense. Like, say you think Trump is a like a tyrant. <laughs> uh, like a lot of people thought he was like like on the extreme left. People like, calling him Hitler. Yeah. Like, so that's the that's the biggest thing. case for gun ownership. Yeah. Right believe there. Hitler's in office. You then should you, want should, a you gun. should want a gun. <laughs> and then, but then at the same time, it's like, I don't know. It's it's crazy because then they still want they still don't want citizens to have guns, so they're gonna yeah. put them all in the hands of a police force that could potentially be. They don't the trust. Stuff. But what? they you don't yeah. trust yeah. the police force, but that's what? the only people that <laughs> one of the to... One of the guys we follow on so uh, Instagram the other day uh, posted it, uh, the, the Pew Pew Jew. If you, if, if mm -hmm. We follow him on Instagram. He posted it. I like He's it like already. dropping into the uh, dro dropping into the Jewish chat room to post people with ARs don't get into cattle cars. <laughs> 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 Whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On their gun control board, yeah, uh, uh, I like that's uh -oh. solid, dude. <laughs> wow, that's that's solid. It's true yeah. facts. It's it's hardcore that's facts. Awesome. I think this is, might be the most political we've got on the, <laughs> the podcast at this. That's point. awesome. I think so. I think uh, us in particular, just like origin story, like it's gonna be inevitable too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. Like our our motto. Like I had to think our logo. We we played around with and stuff. The name just kind of came to me. I came up with the name like literally in like five seconds. I'm like, well, 100 employees, I'm like 100 concepts. That's where the name. That's that's the name. Um, but like our motto, do good, be dangerous, live free. I had to think about that for we a spent long a lot time. Of yeah. time talking about um, long a lot of time talking about it, thinking about it. Like we need like a company motto slash like. Um, a person like model. values compass right to make sure what we're doing lines up with our values and so that was what we were able to come up with mm -hmm. it's the do good be dangerous live free because that ultimately sums up like what we want to be yeah uh, it's dang good dangerous and free like if you have just two of those and you yeah. lack one it's it's a big problem mm -hmm. yeah you kind of yeah. need all three to yeah if you're dangerous and free but not good yeah <laughs> no bueno yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that's a good spot I think that's a good spot to leave off on. Sounds good. Um, where can people find y'all at? 
wiringconcepts.com. Uh, that's the best place because it can't be taken away from us. At least, yeah. well, we'll see for now. And then uh, Instagram is just 100 Concepts, all spelled out. So is our website, just like you write a check, 100 Concepts. Um, we also are on Twitter. It's like 100 Concepts, but we don't really post much on that. Uh, it's called X now. Yeah. Uh, oh, you. my bad. Yeah, we need to do more on other things than Instagram because Meta. They don't like us. They blow. Yeah. Did y'all get the official ban? No, uh, We've not been booted the, yet, but. The official. We are you all at, like where they have to type out your entire name to be able to find? Oh, yeah, oh, that's for sure. For but, I mean, that you got the we can't show you to people that don't oh, follow yeah. your oh, message. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was uh, we like high fived, and I was like, yeah, finally, <laughs> yeah. we made it. We're we're made it. No, I think it goes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Yeah. No, but yeah, yeah. They don't like our content. They don't like the. And also, we got our personals, which is <clears throat> I don't know. We share a little more candidly on those, I think. Uh, but that's just like Jonah underscore OHC. Garrett underscore OHC. Yeah. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, just kind of our more candid thoughts, things yeah. like that. I have a little bit more of like a entrepreneurial bent naturally, I think. So I am planning on probably posting more like just business related stuff, like cool. behind the scenes business stuff. If anyone yeah. Wants to follow me personally. I just post all the nerdy like engineering and music stuff. On yeah, Jonah, yeah. Like and y'all, s- y'all send out a newsletter. We do send out a newsletter. Yes. Please get on it because Instagram hates us and they have banned us so if you sign um, up you get 15 percent off your first order yeah so go to our website and down at the bo- bottom I think. it pop it'll pop up oh yeah. it's a pop-up yeah, yeah sorry yeah. Yeah. and up. then <laughs> you're also you can find some of your, your products at yeah. bigtexordinance.com yeah, big, big text ordinance is one the best place to get that good, <laughs> good answer After the best <laughs> place <laughs> consistently like one of our very top dealers in yeah. there very awesome to us. You guys have really They'll treat us well. There. They'll treat you well. They'll send you stickers and sometimes right. candy. Yeah. They they always look, look forward to those red hots. Oh, yeah. 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 And also, the, like, like probably 10% of our sticker doors, y'all. <laughs> Fantastic. We might have had something to do with that, though. There might have been a sticker shipment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all, y'all started us out. Ian, right? Ian swags us up every time we get something from you guys. The, it was, was that you in, like, the angel pose? Yeah. Your that was our first sticker on the store. Oh. <laughs> I feel honored. Dead center. You should be. I mean, Blessed. isn't there one at like the Blue Force gear train? Did There's uh, Floyd put that one up? I don't or? know if it's me, but there is definitely a big text. Is it supposed to be Angel Wings? Yeah, it, there, it is Angel Wings, but it's Mags. So, you oh, want to hear the story on that real quick? I would love to because I, I have to, no yeah. idea what that is. But. Okay. So, Victoria's Secret originally did like this shoot where it's like a model in their lingerie or whatever <laughs> with, with big, with, with, with wings. I'm Weapon. not familiar, Ike. Yeah. So, <laughs> Weapon Outfitters. The, they have a lot of models oh, that gotcha. they use. Okay. So they did recreated the same picture with one of their models, but with uh, mags as the wings. Okay. Um, and then... And then <laughs> I was our beautiful model. Then we did the same thing. <laughs> we did a ripoff of the, the <laughs> Weapon uh, Weapon Outfitters, but with Ian as our model. Is same mags. in your underwear? Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And, and we used like the Duramags, the red and blue Duramags. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then they poured candy all yeah, over the video of it. <laughs> the video is all the... the the censored version, <laughs> where like I don't know what hits you, but yeah, right in the bean bag. <laughs> gets him, you see him like, oh, it's slow mo in the video. It's hilarious. But then, without him knowing it, we went and got an anime artist to do the drawing of him. If you like, yeah, like the anime artist, she, uh, Chris sent me the PDF. Like she did, like my my tattoos. Like it's like very detailed. She anime did a very art. good job on it, and yeah. it, it took like six months to get because we had to wait backlog with her. Right, she's a professional artist uh what she, uh what's her name uh page i think yeah pageosity yeah she does a lot of stuff in the gun industry right uh, she's yeah. very yeah. close with uh weapon outfitters yeah. yeah and so she did the art for us we ordered the stickers and i was like you got to make sure ian opens that box <laughs> and then like so ian's <laughs> opening the box and people are like recording him on his phone he's like what's going he's on like, yeah. <laughs> like, what? and he opens it up and there's like five thousand stickers <laughs> it's oh great gosh. it's one of my it's, I need to get it framed. And I met I met the artist that shot this year. We actually got a picture together, and I, she was drawing on Duramag, so I have one of her mags in my office. That's That's really I'm cool. thinking like mural across the back wall. Yeah, I yeah. like we have a really good spot in my house that I keep on trying to convince my wife. Right about the dinner table. Yeah, like it's right oh at our front God. door where I want to get like the Please. old school like family portrait painted. <laughs> I but can't imagine why she wouldn't too. want that. Though. I don't. Know. Could you do like the Michael Scott like beer girl? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <But massive. laughs> so yeah, that's 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 me. I'm our mag angel, and it's really funny. Like people, uh, we go to all the different trade shows, 
and people either love it or they're like what the fuck they're like that? mortified they're like i'm not having this this chubby dude sticker on my That's gun old gun culture versus new gun yeah culture. Exactly. and then there's people that are like oh my god this is you that is the funniest thing it's like so either people are they, asking him to sign it. Yeah, stuff. I've signed them. Like they either love it or they're mortified we've, by we've it. We've got a couple of negative emails from customers yeah. before. Like, why are you sending this? I'm like, <laughs> please stop. <laughs> please so stop. many. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, it's yeah. great. Well, it's one of my the, proudest moments. You were the first sticker to grace our sticker door. God, I love that. Yeah. Thank you. It was like you just made Ian's day. Oh, uh, you did. You did. Yeah. yeah, I saw pictures of it. The very first sticker. It's just uh, you, you sent it to me. Yeah, yeah. 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 Good stuff. Good and if stuff. you've stuck around for the sticker story, we appreciate it. Yeah. Make sure you like, subscribe, and follow us on all the social medias and to include our email list, which is probably the most important thing that we've talked about on here. Mm-hmm. Social-wise is email. Please sign up for it if you're not already there. Like, hit the bell, comment below, check these dudes out if you're not already. Check them out. Buy their stuff from us. <laughs> and <laughs> see you next time. Ian? Uh you say classy internet <laughs> <laughs> thanks guys we thanks really for having us on we really appreciate it